as a black man, knowing our history, anything worse than a white supremacist. That is, until Jason Whitlock came along. He is the worst, most despicable, lying, no good, fat ass human being I have ever known in my life. Don't y'all notice why black people scurry away whenever this roach of an individual is around? You know what's out there writing stuff, smiling in my face one minute, talking smack about me behind my back, and then ultimately writing it? It was him. This same Jason Whitlock. That wants to talk smack about me. Is the same Jason Whitlock that wanted to hire me. Weeks later, you wrote a lengthy apology to me in an email begging me to forgive you, pointing out how you were betrayed by this particular writer. So you know how I must feel that you betrayed me. Did you tell the folks that you bitch? Did you tell them? You fat piece of It's the same Jason Whitlock that stood outside doors trying to get me and coax me into even having a conversation with them because they knew I was so disgusted with him, presumably after he hit a strip club. Because we all know ain't nobody trying to go out with him. I had it in my contract, and I have a copy of it, where it specifically stipulates that I never work with Jason Whitlock. It's in writing. No wonder you didn't see him on first take. The real reason and casting no aspersions on what Blaze TV presents and what it has to offer. The real reason he's there is because he can't get a job anywhere else. He hasn't burnt bridges. He's napalmed them. That was the edited version, uh, by the way. All right, I'll put him up for a mask here. Yeah, you know, I've invited Whitlock. Uh, to come and debate me, uh, he has done the cowardly thing and ran away. Stephen A. Smith vowed that he finally speak his mind on Jason Whitlock before a wild, roughly 40 minute rant about the conservative commentator, who he called um, a lot worthless than a damn cockroach. He said on Wednesday, the ESPN personality slammed his former colleague on the Stephen A. Smith show podcast Wednesday after Whitlock who now hosts a show on the right wing network, Blaze TV, questioned the factual accuracy of Smith's memoir on the program and in a column. Um, so here's what uh, Jason Whitlock said. Now, naturally, he's on uh, um, X saying, quote, I knew Stephen A was limited. I didn't know he was this limited. I start, I'm starting to feel sorry for him. I beat up a baby seal. Mm. Uh, so we know. Uh, Whitlock is a um, sellout and extremist. Uh, individual is a self-hating individual. Uh, this has this has not shocked us as far as his rhetoric in the black community. Uh, once we understood who he was and what we what he was, we understood how we have to respond to him. Um, Stephen A. Smith obviously was upset. There's a personal relationship here, in addition to a professional relationship as well. And it looks as if, well, you just had enough, Jordan. It was brutal. What thoughts do you have? I'm kind of enjoying it. I, <laughs> having, <laughs> having watched Jason Whitlock's decline over the past several years has been yeah. really fascinating. Yeah. Um, so he, the, the article that he's talking about is one of the best articles that I've ever read. And I think about it constantly. It was in Deadspin in 2015, and it talks about Jason Whitlock's time running, I would I use that term loosely, <laughs> the undefeated, which was going to be like the Black Grantland and a site that eventually uh, got launched. Kevin Morita, who was the second in command at Washington Post, took it over because Whitlock is just a lunatic and yep. the story reveals it. He's just totally full of himself. He would have these all hands meetings where he would just complain about his haters and talk about how like his, his image of himself, he would have people transcribe inspirational quotes that he would come up with. And it was just a mess. The whole year that he was trying to get the site off the ground was a disaster. And this dead spin piece captured it in a really great way. And they talked about people like in this article then, like Stephen A. Smith, like Jamel Hill, 
who would refuse to work with him because they knew he was a nightmare. Yep. And now that he can't get a job in traditional sports media, he has to run to the blaze. And now he just does right wing cultural commentary and then sprinkles in some sports commentary every now and then. Yep. If he continues uh, down this path, dear brother, he will become a cabinet member under Trump's dictatorship.